Hello and welcome to Strength in Scripture. My name is Alex and today I'm joined with our two new members of the Strength in Scripture team. We have Josh. Hello. And Stephen. Hola. And together with Josh and Stephen, we're going to start a new series of studies or Bible studies on various Bible topics and we will dive deep into the study of God's Word and find practical ways how we can apply today in our daily life. So what are we going to be studying today, Josh? So today we're going to be talking about what a Christ-centered life looks like, what a practical religion looks like, and what happens when we focus on Christ and how His life was. All right. So we're going to just jump right into it. What act on God's part demonstrated at the same time both His love for our world and the cost of transgression? Now this should be a verse that we all know off the top of our head, John 3.16. John 3.16, it says, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And Stephen, if you could read Second Corinthians 5, verse 21. Sure. It says, For he hath made him to be sin for us, who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. So the cross is where mercy and justice literally intersect. And it's where God can just at the same time seek the penalty for sin, Instead of making me pay that price because I'm a sinner, he says, no, Christ is going to pay that price. Christ is going to pay that price for you. So he shows mercy and justice all at once. Any thoughts? That's where we can think about two terms, mercy and grace. When you think about mercy, is not giving someone that thing that he deserves. And when you think about grace, is giving somebody something that he doesn't deserve. So, mercy in the sense that we do not receive the punishment that we deserve for being sinners or for sinning. But when you think about grace, we receive salvation from Christ and it's free. And that's something we definitely do not deserve. And I think a good verse from Romans chapter 5 illustrates God's grace. Because like you said, grace is something that no one deserved. And here it says, for when we were yet without strength, in due time Christ died for the ungodly. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die, yet peradventure for a good man some would even dare to die. But God commendeth his love towards us, in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. So while we were still the worst of the worst, no one would, no one would put their lives in danger for us. The God of all, the yeah. whole universe decided that. Stephen was important enough, that Alex was important enough, that Josh was important enough, that all of you were important enough, that he came here and he died for us. And he didn't even have to ask us. He did it out of his own will. And that, that's the amazing thing about Christianity as a religion. It's the only religion, and I've, I've had many conversations with people from all walks of life, it's the only religion where God himself says, I will take the first step towards you. Yeah. That's why we think about, why do we love Jesus Christ? Why do we love God? Well, it's not because we are afraid of Him. It's because He loved us first. Amen. We respond to the love that He showed us. So, moving forward, guys. Why is it essential for us to keep our eyes focused on Jesus? Let's compare a few verses here. Stephen, if you could read Numbers 21, verse 8. And if you could read John 3, verse 14. Sure. So, Stephen, And the Lord to said unto Moses, Make thee a fiery serpent, and set it upon a pole. And it shall come to pass that everyone that is bitten, when he looketh upon it, shall live. John 3.14 And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. So what do we think about this? Jesus is comparing himself to the serpent to the that serpent, Moses yeah. lifted up. And why? Well, what happened? Uh, Alex, can you tell us a story about what happened with Moses? Well, Moses basically lifted the serpent for the salvation of the people. It was for their benefit that the serpent would have to be erected. And while looking at it, by faith, they were healed. In other words, they had to have faith. And this is what the Bible is all about. This yep. is what Bible is teaching me that I have to have faith in that Christ died for me and I have the possibility or option of salvation through faith. We also refer to this faith as intellectual faith. Or intelligent faith. In yep. other words, it's not some blind, dumb, stupid faith that I just believe or I know this is black is black and white is white. But I believe that this is what it is because the Bible tells me so. And through the evidence that I'm seeing today, the fact that we're still alive. Exactly. Yeah. So, quick question. Stephen, was there anything else they could look at when, this, when they got bitten by the serpent to be saved? 
No, that was the only thing. And the thing is, when they, many people, uh, they did not live near the serpent. But if they truly believe, they would go and search for that serpent. That's and the that's the thing that made the, the difference. It's the same way with Christ. Because if you don't believe, if you don't want to believe that it's going to save you, why would you go why towards you go? it? Yeah. But they, the people who truly believe, they would go, get up, and look for that serpent. And as soon as they would see the serpent, if they were bitten and they were poisoned, they, it would totally go away. Serpent was their light of life. Exactly. And this is what Jesus is to us. He is our light of our life. You know, we look to Him to live um, righteously. We of ourselves are full of sin. Of myself, I cannot do anything good. I like that verse because it says, the, the verse that we that we find written in the Bible that says, without, ye, without me, ye cannot do anything. I, I've heard someone once um, speak about this verse and they said, yes, we sure can do a lot of bad things without Jesus. But the good things that we want to do and we set these goals for ourselves, we set these um, benchmarks and then we fail because we go about uh, achieving those goals or benchmarks on our own strength and our strength cannot carry us through. I think you, a really good example of that in the Bible is when Joshua and the Israelites went to go fight and they forgot to pray about it. They forgot to, right. to counsel yeah. God and they bad. said, we've won so many battles. Why do we need, why do we need to counsel God? We've got this. And they went by their own might and what happened? A they whole bunch destroyed. of Israelites were killed That's and right. they lost the battle. The thing is when you put your eyes upon Jesus, when you, when you, you have this connection with him, He's going to become your model. And you know, if you look at somebody who, who has a model, they're going to dress like him. They're going to try to act like he does. Mm -hmm. They're going to, if, if it's a soccer player or if it's a basketball player, they're going to try to play like they do. So, because that's, that's their model. They want to that's imitate what they're him. That's trying to achieve. Yeah. Uh -huh, exactly. And, but when you make Jesus your model, then you're going to become like him. How is Jesus? He would help the people who need it. That's yeah. right. He would look for the people who were in need and he will try to supply the need he had. And we can actually read about that in Acts 10, 38. If you could read that first. Sure. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. So Jesus went around healing the sick, doing good, having compassion. And if, like you said, if he's supposed to be our role model, if he's what we're trying to be like, then what should we do? We should have the same outlook. We should go about healing. We should go about, you know, trying to help, trying to have compassion on everyone we come into contact with. Focus that's on that did. part. And you would see that religion is not simply theology. It's not simply, oh, let's try to remember the whole mm -hmm. New Testament. No, it won't really do any good if you remember the whole New Testament or the whole Old and New Testament if you don't put it to practice. When we think about the life of Jesus Christ, the majority of time, Jesus was helping the needy. He wasn't, he wasn't trying mm -hmm. to accumulate riches or anything. He was looking for the, what, those who needed him. That's correct. And, and it's an active, it's action. This, this concept that we hear often about practical Christianity, right? You've heard it mentioned before and multiple churches have a series of studies on practical Christianity. But at the end of the day, practical Christianity is your personal application of what you've read in the Bible. Exactly. Maybe a sermon you heard, a Bible verse you read, or someone in need that you saw and you decided to take a minute out of your day Stop being selfish and help someone out. This is what is all about when it comes or when I think of practical Christianity. And this is what I think about being Christ-like, doing the things that he did. As Josh, as you pointed out, he did wonderful works. Yeah. And today, unfortunately, as humanity, we've lost that touch with doing something yeah. unselfish for I, another I, fellow I feel, I feel we should maybe... When we're, you know, in our normal everyday life, we should stop and think, what would Jesus do in my situation when I see, for example, an old lady crossing the road? What would Jesus do? What would Jesus do if he saw that his neighbor was having problems, maybe, maybe turning on his car? It doesn't work. Mm -hmm. And you maybe have the skills to help. Correct. You know, and with what our, would Jesus with, do? In the culture and the times we live in, it's almost like people say, I don't have time to help. I'm busy. I don't have I'm, time. I'm yeah. late for work. We're I'm late to this. Busy. And living in a big city like all of us do. That, that's but your how life is. is always centered on something. And it's on you. When, when you're like that, yeah, your life is centered on you. It's not centered on Christ. And we, what we've discussed here to summarize is Christ saved us. He gave everything for us. He's the light of the world. 
Through him, everything else in the scripture is illuminated. And he is our divine example. His life is how we should live. And there's one of my favorite quotes. I'm probably paraphrasing it, but it's by C.S. Lewis. And he says, I believe in Christianity as I believe in the rising sun. Not because I see it, but because by it, I see everything else. It illuminates your whole worldview. Exactly. Everything you do, all the actions you take, just the way you view your fellow human being. It's like if you were to look at the sun for a while, and after you take your eyes off of, out of it, then wherever you look, you're going to see like a little sun. A tiny little sun. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So whenever you look at Jesus Christ, you're going to start, everywhere you go, you're going to think as Jesus Christ. Remember in... Um, in Acts, it talks about the first time that the people who follow Christians were called Christians. Mm -hmm. the, uh, Christ, uh, Christ were called Christians. It was because they were talking about Christ at all time. Yep. They would speak about Christ. They would act like Christ. What did they figure? We're, we're just going to call them That's Christians. Right. Christians. Yep. So our purpose here, as we've just discussed, is reflecting the love of Jesus in our life, in everything that we do. And when we do that, when we practice that, when we give our whole life to Jesus and He will come into our life and He will fill in the gaps that we have. Because as Josh started, stated at the beginning, we are in sin, right? Of ourselves, we cannot reflect the love of Jesus because we are born in sin. It is only when the love of Jesus is within us, we can reflect it to the world. That's why uh, Paul says he is sufficient enough to cover his in, in, our insufficiencies. Whatever we are lacking, Correct. He brings to the table. That's why Jesus Christ is so important. This is why we always focus on Jesus Christ. Because Jesus is the one who is justifying us. He's the one who had made the exact model that we should exactly. follow. Yep. That's why the Bible calls Him as the foundation of our faith. That's why the Bible says in Hebrew 12 too, because He's the author and the, the finisher, finisher of, our faith. of our faith. This is why Jesus Christ is so important. And wouldn't it be a wonderful world if everyone would focus on Jesus Christ yeah, and focus on loving God over everything and loving his neighbor as himself? That's Things strange. would totally be yeah. different. If we viewed everything through the lens of what Christ lived like and what he would do in that exact moment, I think we could live in an amazing world. Exactly. And that's what we're here at Strength in Scripture is all about. We're about helping our fellow man. We're about bringing the change, okay, in everything that we do. And and you've seen those that have joined us for quite some time. We started with identifying basic principles of a daily life. Then we went through the parables of Jesus Christ, finding how Jesus implemented those basic principles. And now in Strength in Scripture, we're taking on a new challenge new heights one of them is a missionary trip that you've all seen that uh, some of us went uh, back in april so that was phase one of the haiti missionary trip and now we're coming up with phase two of the haiti missionary trip which is actually helping children in need by giving them not only means in terms of uh, basic school supplies by giving them the opportunity to go to school to have a bread to have some water because as we've seen and as you've seen through the videos which we've published they are not doing as well as we are so we hope that you continue to stay tuned with us continue to support strength and scripture by sharing by commenting by subscribing and by liking our videos and uh, we together can deepen our relationship and knowledge of the scriptures. Amen. 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 Adios. Bye.